Louisa, can you please tell me about vestibular migraines? Yeah, vestibular migraine is a form of migraine in which the vestibular symptoms predominate. So you get episodes of dizziness, um, head motion intolerance, visual motion intolerance. Um, and it's simply a form of migraine in which the uh, vestibular symptoms are, are what is the primary concern to the patient. Mm -hmm. And you can recognise it because it's recurrent and episodic in patients who have a history of migraine. Um, so they will describe a dizzy spell in which they are experiencing headache, recognisable migraine headache, um, or photophobia, or phonophobia, or aura symptoms. And in many cases, there'll be complete recovery in between the symptoms. In some patients, there'll be interictal symptoms of disequilibrium, of um, head motion intolerance and visual motion intolerance, and those um, can be addressed separately. Okay. So with, with uh, the, the classical migraine patient, um, uh, we, we traditionally uh, know that 60 minutes for the aura, for example. Is dizziness um, uh, a component of the aura or is it of the headache? Oh, that's, a, that's a great question and one which is much debated amongst experts in the field. Some of the dizziness can be due to aura and it can come on before the headache. Some of it is actually part of the, the migraine process and occurs during the headache and it can occur at any point during the episode. Um, so it, you shouldn't be put off by either the duration mm -hmm. of the dizziness or its time course in relation to the headache from the diagnosis. And in fact, in many um, patients with vestibular migraine, the headache is really not a very prominent feature at all. Okay. So who should I be worried about? Well, most of these patients can be very successfully managed in primary care without any concern on the part of the GP or the doctor. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the patient. Um, I, I think if the symptoms are, are not the typical pattern of the recurrent episodic disorder that you'd expect from migraine, if you've got some other kind of pattern, like a progressive pattern, that might um, uh, warrant a referral. Or if the management that, that you're instigating is, is, not, is not successful, then you might seek specialist advice at that point. So Louise, how can I manage vestibular migraines? The key thing, first of all, is to educate the patient about the diagnosis. This is a condition in which the ultimate goal is that patients will be self-managing. It's a chronic recurrent disorder and they want to be um, equipped to deal with the symptoms as and when they occur themselves. Because vestibular migraine is a relatively new diagnosis, very few patients um, will have come across it. And it's worth investing a bit of time at the beginning when you make the diagnosis in describing to patients what exactly vestibular migraine is. Many patients will react by saying, um, well, I know what a migraine headache's like, my symptoms are nothing like that. So always start with a, a careful explanation to the patient of, of what, what you think um, the vestibular migraine is and why it's causing their symptoms. And then um, there's lifestyle advice, which is very similar to that which you give to other migraine patients. Um, Dietary management is relevant to very few patients and there is no specific evidence that dietary factors um, will be specifically beneficial to patients with vestibular migraine. Um, but regular sleep, regular eating, um, avoidance of caffeine and alcohol may be worth adopting in some cases. Then um, there's acute relief for episodes of vestibular migraine. The headache you manage along standard lines with analgesics and triptans if required. Triptans don't seem to help particularly for the vestibular mm. symptoms. So if, if the headache's not prominent, they may not be of much benefit. And in those patients, you can use uh, vestibular sedatives like cinarazine, cyclozine, prochlorperazine, domperidone, but only very short um, courses for, for acute relief symptoms only. If you're failing to get on top of things um, with acute relief, then the next step of the ladder is to think about prophylaxis. Again, just as you would for migraine headache. And the key thing about vestibular migraine here is to incorporate the vestibular symptoms as well as the headache symptoms when working out the total disability to determine the threshold to start the prophylaxis. As far as choosing prophylactic agents is concerned, that there's no specific agents that are particularly recommended for vestibular migraine. So you can use the full armory of uh, 
regular prof migraine prophylactic agents. Which we've uh, addressed and discussed in the other podcast. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So what's the prognosis of vestibular uh, migraine? Well, because it's a relatively new entity, there aren't many studies in which patients have been followed up for the very long term to tell us the answer to that question. Um, and the answer is it's likely to be quite variable from, with some patients having um, a very benign course and some patients having more problems as, as, as the years go on. Mm. Very much like migraine where um, uh, there is the possibility of developing a, a chronic pattern but many patients will find that actually um, at different periods of their life they will develop um, migraine attacks that are problematic whereas at other times it's much more quiescent and as people move um, into their um, older years it tends to, to, to settle down completely. Any role for rehabilitation? Very much for the um, interictal symptoms particularly disequilibrium visual motion intolerance and head motion intolerance. And if those are a problem, then certainly vestibular re rehabilitation should be considered. And those are patients in whom an integrated balance service are extremely useful. The key thing is that patients who are referred for rehabilitation need to have a clear diagnosis um, before they can actually start their rehabilitation so that it can be tailored to their specific circumstances.